from Hollywood, the Hollywood Radio Theater. Starring Robert Wagner, Terry Moore, and Joan Evans in Our Very Own. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. F.U. Herbert has long been noted as a writer of scintillating comedy, particularly concerning the foibles of teenagers. Sometimes the problems of teenagers lend themselves to exaggeration or satire. But in tonight's story, our very own, adapted from the motion picture of that name and produced by Samuel Gowen, Mr. Herbert has chosen to dramatize a very serious situation, one that changed the lives of an entire family because of the selfishness of one spoiled daughter. And as our stars of this moving drama, we have three of the fastest rising young stars in Hollywood, Terry Moore, Joan Evans, and Robert Wagner. Now, our very own, starring Joan Evans as Joan, Robert Wagner as Chuck, and Terry Moore as Gail. It's a late afternoon in June, and at the Macaulay residence in suburban Los Angeles, an important occasion is taking place. The Macaulays are getting a television set. An event made even more special because of the young man who's installing it. Well, hi. Hi. And you better get off that ladder. What are you doing on the roof anyway? I'm putting up the aerial, and I don't need any help. Well, I just thought you might like some company. Well, it's your roof. Watch your step, though. Didn't you come kind of early, Chuck? Gail isn't home from school yet. Believe it or not, this is one time I didn't come here to see Gail. This happens to be my business. How come she's still in school? Oh, another meeting with the faculty about the graduation exercises. Fascinating, isn't it? Don't act so bored. Another year and you'll be graduating, too. I can't wait. Look, why don't you just go down the but ladder and... I like watching you. And I think you're very pretty in your work clothes. Yeah, I'll bet. Okay, I'll go. You mad at me now? Oh, don't be silly. Hey, look down the street. Holy smoke. That's Zaza's new car. She's driving Gail home. Those are the kind of friends to have. Tell Gail I'll be down in a minute. Well, thanks for the lift, Zaza. What about tonight? Will you come over? I'll talk to Mother and phone you. The whole crowd will be there. Please come. I'd love to. Well, I'll do my best. Hiya, Gail. Chuck, what are you doing up on the roof? I'll be right down. If I can come tonight, I'll get Chuck to bring me. Still the big moment in your life, huh? Oh, this isn't just a crush, Zaza. Chuck's wonderful. As a matter of fact, I... Well? Some other time, Zaza. There's Joan. Bye. Chuck look cute up there? Joan, look at your dress. Well, it is pretty messy on that roof. What were you doing up there? Oh, just watching Chuck. Don't you think you're getting a little too old to be climbing ladders? Oh, you know me. But you'd better wait till he's through up there. No fun necking on a roof. Hang on to that ladder. I'm coming down. You know, if you were to put on a nice white shirt and a tie, you might get invited to take me to a party tonight. Okay. You've twisted my arm. <laughs> Looks like you had quite a workout up there. Too beat up to be kissed? I'd like to see the day. That's just your youth. You don't know your own mind yet. Oh, I don't, don't I? Chuck, what were you and Joan talking about? Nothing, just talking. Now, come on in the house. I've got to get back to work. So, would it be all right, Mother, if Chuck takes me over to Zaza's? She's having some people over. Hmm. Well... Ask Daddy. Well, why pass the buck to me? Besides, this is a fine time to ask permission. After Chuck gets here. Oh, she's not so dumb, Pop. Penny, you keep out of this. <laughs> okay, okay, go on out. Thanks, Daddy. But just wait till you're a father of three girls, young man. I'll use you as an example, Mr. McCauley. I think you do fine. Hmm, 
How's the television working? Yeah, nobody gives me a chance to find out. I came in here to look at wrestling. That's the wrong dial, Daddy. If you'd only let me now show you... Now, get away from here, Penny. I can do it. But you've got it much too bright. It's that other little knob. Penny, I'm paying for this contraption. <laughs> do you mind if I learn how to work it myself? I guess we can go now, Chuck. It's really very simple, Mr. McCauley. A, a child could work it. If her father would allow her to. Well, good night, you kids. Have a good time. Thanks, Mrs. McCauley. So long, Joan. Oh? You two leaving so soon? I was hoping you'd help me with my science, Chuck. I've got a better idea. Joan doesn't have a date tonight, Gail. Why don't you take her along? Penny, how can you be so tactless? I don't think she's tactless at all. And I didn't put her up to it either. Well, why shouldn't they take her, Mother? It's just Zaza's. It isn't like a regular date. Well, why don't we, Gail? Let's do. Come along if you'd like, Joan. Oh, I'm sure it'll be all right. I do know Zaza just as well as you do. Now, just a minute. It was awfully nice to offer to take her, but Joan's staying home. She has some studying to do. Oh, Mother. That'll be enough, Joan. Okay, then. I'll just walk out with them. I'll be right back. Me, too. Sure. You, too, Penny. Good night. Good night, Chuck. Good night. He's a nice boy, that Chuck. Oh, yes. I like him better each time we see him. Yes, I think he'd be quite suitable, Fred. Suitable? In two days, Gail will be 18 years old. Oh, yes. We were going to talk about her party, weren't we? Don't change the subject. Girls do get married at 18, Fred. Oh, for heaven's sake. She's just a kid. Well, it so happens that I was several months younger when you married me, remember? Oh, well, that was different. You had good sense. Look at the prize you caught. <laughs> now, come on. Let's see if I can get the rest of Trying on Gail's dress, Joan. Penny, you're supposed to be asleep. So are you at this hour. He really is awfully cute, isn't he? Who? President Eisenhower. Very funny. Who do you really like best? Chuck or Bert Pearson? Oh, go to sleep and don't talk nonsense. Oh, <laughs> never mind then. But people only say don't talk nonsense when you're getting warm. And if you ask me... Joan, why aren't you in bed? Oh, well, I, I was studying, Mother, and then, well, I, I decided to try on Gail's dress. Doesn't it look cute on me, Mother? Yes, yes, it does. But you know Gail doesn't like you to wear her clothes. Now, take it off and go to bed. Oh, as long as you're still up, run downstairs and let the dog out, will you? Yes, Mother, in a minute. Good night. We're home very early, Chuck. Well, that's the idea. I want your folks to realize I'm a sturdy, reliable character. Oh, they're sold on you already. Are they? Uh-huh. You're probably all asleep. You want to come in for a little while? Well, uh, what's wrong with the porch swing? Not a thing. I even keep the springs well-oiled. Well-oiled, huh? <laughs> well, it's still much better than Zaza's party. I've got you all to myself now. Do you realize you haven't kissed me since... Gosh, I, I'm terribly sorry. Well, I had no idea. Well, you see, you're, you're home so early. Why on earth aren't you in bed? Well, Mother told me to put the dog out. I, I am sorry. R and may really... I ask what you're doing with my dress on? Well, I was just trying it on, Gail. I, uh, I guess I'd better go on up now. That might be a good idea. Oh, come on, Gail. She didn't I'm mean I'm terribly to... sorry. Honestly. Good night, Chuck. Good night, Joan. And don't worry about the dress, Gail. It isn't in the least bit crushed. And don't you think it looks better on me than it does on you? Good night, Joan. Come on, Belinda. Come on, get in the house. Now, come on. Leave her alone. You were supposed to be putting her out, weren't you? Oh, oh yes, of course. Oh, now, quit scowling, honey. Come on, snap out of it. Chuck, please. Oh, now, look, ball her out if you want to, but don't get mad at me. I'm not. Then prove it. All right, I will. Good night, Chuck. Good night, honey. See you tomorrow. Joan? Shh. You'll wake Penny. I want to talk to you. Not now. It's so late. Oh, wait a minute. Here. Here's your old dress. Come out here in the hall. Look, I've said I was sorry about the dress. Never mind the dress. I'm talking about Chuck. Oh, I don't know what you mean. Don't act so innocent. For one thing, Joan, what were you doing up on the roof this afternoon looking so coy and cute? 
Well, I'm sure I don't know what you're so excited about. As far as Chuck's concerned, I'm just your kid sister. You know, like Penny. Okay, let's forget it. Do you want the dress? Do I? And it's yours. But I'll bet Mother won't let you wear it cut so low. Oh, gosh, thanks, Gail. Good night, Joan. Joan, is that you, dear? Hi. Well, it's about time. Come on in the dining room and help us. What's the matter this time? Nothing's the matter, dear, except it happens to be Gail's birthday, and we've got a few things to do for the party tonight. Golly, the party? I forgot all about it. I'll bet you did. The work part, anyway. Help Penny with the card tables, will you, dear? Oh, in, in a minute. Where's Gail? Chuck and Gail drove down to the beach for a swim. Oh? Alone? Well, why not? Oh, nothing. I suppose it's all right. After all, she is 18. Uh, Mother, a lot of the girls in school are going to get a job for the summer. Well, I'd like to get a job, too. Well, that's fine, dear. I'm proud of you. But I've got to prove that I'm over 16. Don't, I'm terribly busy. Can't it wait, dear? Look, but all I need is my birth certificate, and then I can bring it to the principal Annie, and Annie, there's help... no use cleaning silverware unless you take the trouble to dry Mother, it. Mother, please. If you'll just tell me where it is, I'll get it myself. Where what? Oh, your birth certificate. Look, I know we'll forget it if I don't get it now. Mm. It's in the desk in my bedroom, the bottom drawer, dear. That seal box where Daddy keeps all his papers. Thanks, Mother. I'll be right down. It's a long envelope with your name on it. And for Pete's sake, Payments on the house, savings bonds, marriage license, Gail's adoption... Gail's adoption papers. Adoption papers? Oh, no. Hi, sweetie. Well, how's my birthday, girl? Oh, I feel just wonderful, Daddy. Sit down at the beach, huh? Have a good time? Well, Chuck was with me. <laughs> I guess that answers my question. I left all the work of the party to Mother. I'm ashamed of myself. Well, this is one day she'll excuse you. Hi, Daddy. Mother's upstairs. She told me to tell you to come on up. Oh? Well, if that means I've got to dress up tonight. You know, Jody, you've been staring at me ever since I came home. Have I? I've just been wondering how it would feel. How what would feel, being 18? You'll soon know, honey. Yes, but it won't be quite the same, will it? Why not? Oh, nothing. Skip it. That's a good idea. I've got to take a shower and get to rest. John said you want to see me, dear. Oh, yes. Fred, close the door, will you? What's up? Oh, probably nothing, but I've done something foolish and I'm worried. Foolish? Well, you know about Joan wanting to get a job this summer. <laughs> when it happens, I'll believe it. Is that all? Well, she kept bothering me for her birth certificate. I told her to come up here and get it, completely forgetting that it was probably down at the very bottom of that box. Well? Darling, Gail's adoption papers are in that box. Did Joan say anything? Well, no, but... Well, then why be upset? If she'd seen anything, she'd have spoken to you about it or asked questions, wouldn't she? Oh, I guess so. I just don't know. All the kid wanted was her birth certificate? Besides, she's not the kind to go through papers that are none of her business. <laughs> no, if it were Penny. I'd hate for Gail ever to find out, Fred. Listen, they haven't the remotest idea, any of them. Why should they? Maybe we should have told Gail when she was old enough to understand, Maybe, but... but we didn't. And we never will, so forget it. Whenever the girls start arguing, I think about it. And whenever I think about it, I know that Gail is your daughter, every bit as much as Joan and Penny. So stop it, darling. Stop worrying. They do fight, of course, but I think they really adore each other. Don't you? They're great kids, all three of them. Now, how's that party going to be? Oh, wonderful, Fred, I think. Gail will be so happy. I'm sure she will. Oh, how can I thank you, Mother? Everything's just so, so perfect. Now, you just forget about Daddy and me. You've got a house full of gifts. But I can't forget. And my locket, Daddy. Chuck, look, isn't it beautiful? Uh-huh. Combination birthday and graduation present. Oh, I don't know about that. 
I think we might manage to buy her something from the dime store when she graduates. Oh, nothing doing. If she chose to get herself born just before people graduate, that's her tough luck. Oh, I'm never going to take it off, Daddy. Not even in the shower. Oh. Hey, Gail, how about a piece of birthday cake? Oh, my goodness. Right away, Bert. I'm sorry. Joan, dear, help Gail, will you? Oh, she's doing all right. Besides, it's her party. How do you like this kid? <laughs> Just look at you, Chuck. You're all covered with cake crumbs. Here, give me your handkerchief. Hmm? Oh, thanks. Well, nothing bashful about our journey, is there? It's not amusing. Where are you going, Chuck? Oh, just out on the porch for some air. We could dance on the porch. I, well, I mean if you sure, want to. Sure, sure. Come along. Hey, that's a cute dress. I'm glad you like it. Gail gave it to me. Did she? But, uh, isn't it a little, well, you know. Is it? No, maybe not. I... You know, I I wish we never had to go inside. I wish we could just keep dancing on and... Yeah, then... sure. Only we'd better stop right now. Why? What's the matter? Well, look, my cufflink. It's caught in your dress or something. Maybe it's fate. We're linked together. Hey, take it easy. I don't like this ruffle anyway. Here, this will make it very simple. Now, wait a minute. Well, it didn't belong on the dress in the first place. Mother made me sew it on so I wouldn't look your own. I'm amazed at you. It's my fault, Mrs. McCauley. I, I got my cufflink caught in her dress. Joan's been neglecting Bert and everyone else inside. I don't know what's the matter with her tonight. Well, gosh, can I help it if Chuck asks me to dance? I'll bet Gail told she you. She didn't have to. I've been watching you. And if Chuck asked you to dance, he was only being polite. And if I were you, Joan, Come I'd on, kind of... Joanie, I thought this was my dance. Of course, Bert. Be right there. You see, Mother? I'm not neglecting anyone. And a good time was had by all. End of a perfect day, Gail. Let's take a ride around the block. No, Chuck, do you mind? Tired out, huh? A little. Oh, your flowers were so lovely a little while ago. Now they're all faded. Oh, now, don't go symbolic on me. Sure, they're wilted. Five million people in a nice warm night. Come for a ride just once around the block. Oh, you two still out on the porch? Good night, Chuck. Good night, Joan. I'm sure Joan would love to go around the block with you. Oh, don't be an idiot. I, I can't help it, Chuck. Now, look, we'll never get the first base if you start chewing your nails every time I look at your kid sister. Now, be your age and tell Joan to be hers. That's a good idea. I'm going right in and do that. Good night, Chuck. Gail, wait, I... Okay. Good night, honey. Holy smoke, it looks like we had a hurricane here, not a party. Where's Joan, Daddy? She's straightening up in the den. I hope. I've already spoken to her, Gail. I want to speak to her. Joan, wait a minute. But, Mother... You can put the dishes down. What are you closing the door for? Because I want to talk to you. Do you have to, Gail? I'm tired. Besides, I've heard it all from Mother. I behaved in a, quote, most shocking and unbecoming manner, end quote. You certainly did. At my party with my boyfriend and in my dress. Would you like to have it back? You can have it right now. Don't be such a little fool. Try to remember that... Yes, I know. That I'm still a little girl and it isn't nice to try to take away anything that belongs to you. Anything else you'd like to add? Plenty. I think it's simply awful the way you throw yourself at Chuck. I every time have he... to listen to your talk. You'll listen and like it. I wouldn't go on if I were you. Joan, it wouldn't hurt you once in a while to take my advice. I don't need your advice. Well, you're going to get it whether you like it or not. It so happens that I have a right You to... don't have any rights at all. None. Absolutely none. Well, I am your older sister. Oh, no, you're not. You may be older, but you're not my sister. You're not even related to me. What are you talking about? You're not even related to Mother and Daddy. What do you know about that? Joan! Joan, how could you? What does she mean? What is she talking about? Joan, go to your room. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I didn't know what I was saying. Go to your room. We'll talk to you later. But what did she mean? Gail... Darling, come and sit down. Don't just look at me. Is it true? Tell me, is it true? Make a friend, and you make an ally. There's a thought for you to keep in mind, as many another American has. Dan West and the Church of the Brethren know what it can mean. Shortly after World War II began, 
Dan West, an Indiana farmer, addressed a men's meeting in the Church of the Brethren. He told them how, as a relief worker abroad, he'd seen children dying of starvation, although surrounding hills were rich and green. He also told them how much it would help the starving people of Europe if America could send them milk-giving cows. In full agreement, the Brethren appointed a committee to put Dan West's plan into action. Pastors asked their congregations to save their nickels and dimes and donate calves instead. Farmers, hearing of the project, earmarked newborn calves for it and raised them with special care. Pamphlets describing the heifer project were sent all over the country. The plan began to snowball, and donations rolled in from farmers, churches, students, and 4-H club members. Volunteers pledged 60 days of their time away from farms and businesses to tend the cattle on their voyage to European countries. The results have more than answered the dream of Dan West. It's been estimated that since the heifer project began, over 35,000 lives have been saved by fresh milk from American cows. And the Brethren's act of neighborliness on a world scale has been repaid by the hundreds of grateful letters they've received. Letters which prove that by helping others, you help your country. Now our producer, Mr. Cummings. Act two of our very own, starring Robert Wagner as Chuck, Harry Moore as Gail, and Joan Evans as Joan. It's a moment later. Stunned and bewildered, Gail listens as her mother and father struggle to explain the story of her adoption. And then after the doctors thought I couldn't have a baby. Then we found you, darling. Found? You found me? We chose you, Gail. We chose you from hundreds of babies. And then, as often happens, a few months later, we learned I was going to have Joan. We planned at first to tell you, Gail, when you were old enough. And then we decided not to. Why? Because from the moment we found you, you were our very own. We decided we'd just never tell you. How did Joan find out? Did you tell her? No. No, of course not. She was looking for her birth certificate. She must have come across your adoption papers in the desk. I'll never understand how Joan could do what she did. It's all right. If it were the other way around, maybe I'd feel the same. Oh, Gail, darling, she didn't know what she was saying. Joan loved you. Please try to forgive her. And us. The trouble is, we picked up a pretty smart daughter. Only the parents you picked aren't so bright. I... I'd like to go up to my room. Is there anything else you want to know? No. No, I don't think so. Good night. Thank you very much for... For giving me such a nice birthday party. Fritz. Oh, Fritz. Gail? Gail, I'm so ashamed. I don't know what to say. Please, may I come in? It's late, Joe. But, Gail, please. I don't want to talk about it. More coffee, Fred? No. No, thanks. Well, what about the kids? Where are they? Joan and Penny ate early. They're around somewhere. I told Gail she needn't come down for breakfast. Yeah, maybe you're right. She's quite herself again, I think. She's working on a graduation speech. But don't you think we ought... I've been out in the yard. I picked these flowers for Gail. Well, oh, good morning, Daddy. Hi, funny face. Well, that was very sweet of you, Penny, but please, let's, let's try to be perfectly normal about this. Mother, if I was an adopted baby, would you tell me? Now, look, if you want to see your birth certificate, go on upstairs and look at it. Of course, it wouldn't really make any difference. But I'm still awfully glad you had me. Anything else? Well, just that I picked the flowers to kind of make up for all the things that I... Well, Gail's pretty bossy, and... Well, I- I've been an awful stinker about it. And she'll probably continue to be bossy, being your older sister, and you'll undoubtedly continue to be a stinker, if you'll pardon the expression. <laughs> Mother, Bert's outside. Is it all right if I go to school now? Oh, good morning, Daddy. Well, come here, Joan. Haven't you forgotten something? I usually get a kiss good morning. After last night, I... I didn't think you'd want me to. Well, I'm waiting. Now, that's more like it. Now, listen to me. Kids do foolish things, sometimes cruel things. But they're still your kids, and you don't love them any the less. 
We told you that last night. Thank you, Daddy. Okay, now get to school. Goodbye, Mother. See you later, Penny. Yeah, you usually do. Well, it's time for me to get going, too. Would you have time to drop Penny off? I suppose so. Get your things, kid, and make it snappy. Okay, okay. Phone me later, Lois. Let me know how things are. Look, do you think I should go up and say goodbye to her? No. Let's not do anything to make her self-conscious. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, I'll go out and get the car. Before Daddy left, he wanted to come up here and say goodbye. And I told him not to, Gail. Oh, it's all right. It doesn't matter. How's your speech coming along? Not very well. I don't feel much like writing speeches for graduation. I know, dear. I know. Just don't worry about it. It's really very unimportant. I'm not worried. I've been wondering, are my real parents alive? I've been expecting that, Gail. That's why I hurried the others off. I thought you might feel like talking about it now. Are my real parents alive? Your father died before you were born. An automobile accident. Your mother's alive. Do you know her? No. No, we've never even seen her, and she doesn't know who we are. The adoption was arranged through Daddy's lawyer. You know, Mr. Hoffman. It's through him that we know she's still living. That's about as much as we do know, dear. Would you mind if I went to see her? I won't if you don't want me to. I, I, I just thought... I can ask thought... Daddy to speak to the lawyer. He may be able to arrange it. I, I feel I should see her, that's all. She is my real mother. Of course. I'll phone Daddy as soon as he's had a chance to let you. Good phone range, Lois. Hoffman just called her back. Now, you've got the address I gave you, and it's Lynch. Mrs. Gertrude Lynch. Yes. Yes, I, I wrote it down. Fred, did Mr. Hoffman tell her why I was coming? Yes. Oh, thank goodness. Then she'll expect me and know what it's all about. Now, what about Gail? Are you taking her with you? No, I I think I'd better go alone. Give yourself plenty of time. It's the other side of Long Beach. <laughs> I'll find it, dear, and don't worry. I'll see you at home tonight. <laughs> Yes. Mrs. Lynch, I'm Mrs. McCauley. Oh, yes. The lawyer for me. Please come in. Oh, thank you. This, this isn't exactly the best neighborhood in town, is it? Oh, I fixed her some iced tea being such a hot day. I hope you like iced tea. Oh, yes, thank you. I uh, suppose the lawyer explained why I'm here. Yes, he, he did. You can imagine how I feel after all these years. It was a, a real shock. Oh, there's lots of lemon and sugar. Oh, thank you. Mrs. Lynch, for a number of reasons, we never told Gail she was adopted. Gail? Oh, that's a real pretty name. We never told her until yesterday that she was not our own daughter. Yes, the lawyer told me. She wants to see you. She really wants to see me? What for? Isn't it natural? Well, isn't she happy with you? I, I mean, you mean you want to... Oh, no. Oh, no, please don't misunderstand. She's very happy. And until yesterday, she never doubted for a moment that she was our own daughter. It's just that now that she knows, uh, she wants to see her real mother, that's all. Well, you can be very proud of your daughter, Mrs. Lynch. I've brought a snapshot along. Would you like to see it? Oh, yes, please. Now, this was taken only a couple of weeks ago. She, she's so pretty. Yes, she's very pretty. You know, it's hard to realize. My kid. Can you imagine my kid? And blonde, huh? I used to be like, like her, too. Uh, these are her sisters, Joan and Penny. Adopted, too, huh? No, they're our own children. Oh, you're lucky. I never had another kid. You're lucky, all right. Oh, but you're a good baby. You know, healthy and all that. Oh, yes. And she's a wonderful girl. She's graduating from high school the day after tomorrow. Graduating high school? It just seems like it never happened. And now she wants to see me. Yes. I got, I got married again, you know that. Yes. Mr. Lynch don't know about her, see. It, it was just one of those things. And, 
Anyway, he doesn't know, and I don't want him to know. If he ever knew... It... This is one of those things. Then you don't want to see her? I do want to see her, and I've got to be careful and do it right if Mr. Lynch was to find out. And it's just one of those things. That's the way it stands, Fred. Mr. Lynch doesn't know about Gail, and he mustn't know. But he always goes out Wednesday nights. Bowling, she said. She'll be alone, then? Yes. I said we'd drive down with Gail tomorrow night. And you've spoken to Gail? Yes. Oh, I'm so proud of Gail, Fred. And she... She was only apologetic, as if she were ashamed of having borne her. She kept saying it was just one of those things. Huh. One of those things. Tomorrow night. We'll have an early dinner. If we can leave here by 7 o'clock, we should be here. <laughs> You better get ready, Gail. It's almost 7 o'clock. Yes, I know. I'm ready. Okay, honey, I'll get the car. Would you rather I drove you down, Gail? I mean, just the two of us. No. No, I... You can go alone if you'd rather. You see, we didn't know what you'd prefer, but... I asked Zaza to drive me down. Oh? Why Zaza, of all people? Because she... She's my best friend. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I didn't mean... I told her all about it. I'd rather go with her. I hope you don't mind. No, of course not, dear. Perhaps it's a good idea. You might feel self-conscious about our waiting. What about Chuck, Gail? Have you said anything to him? No, I... I haven't seen Chuck. I think I'll go down and wait out on the porch. It's cooler. Okay, sweetie. We'll wait up for you. If you don't want me to go, just say so. Gail, please. You mustn't deliberately misunderstand everything that's said. I'm sorry. Oh, why does it have to be so hot? Are you leaving now, Gail? I'll wait on the porch for Zaza. Gail, please listen to me. I want to say something. You said enough the other night, Joan. Look, take it out on me. I deserve it. But but you shouldn't take it out on them. They were only trying Hiya, to... Gail. My gosh, you're hard to reach. I've phoned dozens of times. Well, are you coming out or should I come in? I'll come out. How come you didn't call me back? What's the matter? I can't talk to you now, Chuck. I'm just leaving. Leaving? I'm going down to Long Beach to meet my mother. Your mother? Yes, she lives there. What are you talking about? Zaza's here. I'm sorry, but I have to leave. Now, wait a minute. What's happened? I don't even know what you're talking about. Joan's inside. Ask Joan. I'm sure she'd be very glad to explain. I like your dress, Gail. You look very cute. Thanks. One ought to try to make a good impression on one's relatives. Take it easy, Gail. Is it so foolish of me, Zaza, wanting to see her? Don't ask me. I'm no authority on mothers, or even stepmothers, although I've had quite a few. Why? Your folks think it's foolish? No, but they don't like it very much, I suppose. Maybe they've got a point. I don't know. Maybe they have. I wonder if she's there yet. Except she's only been gone half an hour. Oh, yeah. I wish I'd have known about this in time. Maybe I could have helped her. I'd, I'd like to hang around until she gets home. Oh, yes, of course, Chuck. Poor kid. Just had her 18th birthday, all ready to graduate, and, and this had to happen. Mother, telephone. It's for you. Oh, who's calling, Joan? I don't know. It's, uh, it's some woman. Hello, this is Mrs. McCauley. McCauley, this is Mrs. Lynch. Yes? Well, it's like this Mr. Lynch was going bowling like I said. He always does, see, but... Just now he phoned me. He said he was bringing a bunch of people home to play cards instead. No? You mean they'll be there I when... I just don't know what to do. Look, you've got to stop her from coming here. But that's impossible. She's on her way. On her way? Oh, I see. Look, Gail's driving down with a friend. It's a gray convertible. Maybe if you could... If I could wait outside, if I could get her before she comes in. Oh, please, you've got to do something, Mrs. Lynch. Yeah, it's my problem. All right, I'll, I'll figure something out, I guess. But Gail thinks you're going to be alone. She won't know what I'm to... I'm sorry, Miss McCauley. I don't like this any more than you do. Mrs. Lynch? Mrs. Lynch? Hey, for Pete's sake, Greg, why do you keep looking out the window for? Oh, I didn't know I was. I, 
Because it's just cooler over here. <laughs> Keep your eyes open for Charlie, honey. He ought to be coming along soon. Oh, yeah, I'll watch yeah, yeah. for him. Charlie knows where we live. Okay. Hey, what about that beer good I asked you ten minutes ago? And with cards I like these, I could use a beer. <laughs> it's in the icebox, Jim. Oh, you paralyze or something? Oh, Come on, now. baby, we're thirsty. You keep your shirt on, honey. How many of you want a beer? Bring it up for everybody. Okay, I call. Yeah? I got three nice little sixes. Uh, that beats two pairs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that ain't enough. Huh? Take a look. Three little ten. Oh, no. Oh, I, I had three seven. Hey, Jim, ain't that somebody what? at the door? Yeah, come on in, Charlie. Come on, door's open. Oh, yeah, come Charlie. on in, Charlie. Oh, Charlie. Oh, Charlie. Oh. Well, hello, cutie pie. What can I do for you? I'm sorry. I must have the wrong address. I'm looking for a Mrs. Lynch. No, you come to the right place, baby. I'm Jim Lynch. <laughs> hey, Gert, it's Miss America here. <laughs> come on, Gert, you got to call her. Hey, who's your friend, Gert? <laughs> Hello. Mrs. Lynch? I, I'm Gail McCauley. I, well, I thought you were expecting me. Of course. How silly of me. This is the little McCauley girl I told you about, Jim. Yeah. Uh, or, or do I forget to mention it? Uh, looks like you were old enough. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, I like him young and cute like this. <laughs> I used to know our folks when Gail was knee-high to a duck. Well, folks, meet Miss McCauley. How do you do? How do you do? I just think it's darling you to drop by, honey. Anyways, why don't we go inside where we can gab? No. No, it's all right. I'll come back some other time. Please don't bother. Well, we got a visit, don't we? Come on, they won't miss us none. Help yourself to the beer, folks. We can have a nice talk, huh? No. No, please, I'd better go. Oh, honey, please, I'm so sorry. I, I just didn't get a chance. It's all right. I'll come back some other time. All those people, he brought them home unexpectedly. And, and, and then, well, Jim doesn't know anything about you, see? Hey, so... Gert, I thought you said you fixed sandwiches. Just a second, Jim. Look, if I could just slip out the back way. Oh, whatever you say, honey. Hey, Gert, you know we got guests in here. I guess I better go in before he gets sore. Goodbye, honey. Goodbye. I'm sorry. Me too. You can see how it is. It's just one of those things. Well, how was it? Tell me. It was fine. Wonderful. It was very sweet. So pretty. Well, what did she say? Was she glad to see you? Yes, of course. Oh, Zaza. Please don't ask me any more questions. I'm sorry. I'll take you home. No. No, I don't want to go there now. Zaza, please, could I go home with you? Of course. Don't worry, Gail. I understand. Look at the time, Lois. Almost 12.30. She should have been home hours ago. Do you suppose she could still be in Long Beach? Maybe Mrs. Lynch managed to get rid of her guests. She could be there. My guess would be that she went straight to Zaza's house. Then suppose I phone. No. No, don't call her. I just want to find out if she's there. If she is, I'll tell her to come home. There's no use telling her, dear. She must want to come home. I don't care how upset she is. She has no right to do this to you. Look, uh, suppose I... Suppose I run along. If I find out anything, I'll let you know. Thanks, Chuck. Looks like Pop's out again, as usual. We can have the whole place to ourselves. I'm glad. We can talk then. Maybe you better talk to your folks before you... Chuck! Hello, Zaza. Hi. They're worried sick, Gail. Me too. I just had a hunch I might find you here. Please, Chuck, leave me alone. You're going to listen to me, and then you're going home. No, I'm not. Not now, Chuck. Let her alone. I'm sorry to make a scene, Zaza, but I've got to talk to her. I've been with your folks all this time, Gail. They told me the whole story. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sure you're sorry. Well, I don't want pity from anybody. Why don't you let me finish? I was only trying to tell you that I'm sorry you had such a difficult meeting tonight. It wasn't difficult at all. She's my real mother, isn't she? That's a debatable point. And stop walking away. I'll do what I want. Let go of me. Gail. Gail, does it, it doesn't make any difference. Don't you know that? Not to anyone. Certainly not to us. Don't you believe me? I don't know what to believe anymore. I'll tell you one thing to believe. That I love you. But it doesn't make the slightest difference to anyone, to me or to your folks. Then why were they so afraid to let me know the truth? Why do you suppose? They thought they were doing the best thing for you. 
Maybe they made a mistake in keeping it a secret. Is, is that any reason to hurt them now? It's not like you. How do you know what I'm like? How does anyone know? Gail, I, I didn't come here to fight with you. I came here to tell you that... That you're sorry for me. Yes, I know. Sorry? You don't know how lucky you are. You feel sorry for kids who don't find a wonderful family like yours. Your mother and father... I don't need you to tell me about them. Maybe you do. Let me ask you something. In all your life, did you, did you ever for one instant feel any difference? Feel less love than Joan and Penny? Well, did you? No. But you don't understand I how... understand only this. All your life, you've taken your folks, your home, and everything else for granted. Like any normal kid. It's very natural and nobody blames you, least of all your mother and father. But maybe from now on, you won't take it all for granted. If it makes that difference, I say it is all to the good. Now, come on and let me take you home. I'm not leaving, Chuck. I want to stay here. Okay. Maybe the difference is bigger than I thought. Good night, Gail. The town of Kotzebue, Alaska, had very little defense against the fire which raced through it on a winter's night. In a few hours, houses, stores, and other buildings had burned to the ground, and many people were homeless. But a unit from the 11th Air Division, stationed nearby, took charge. They made space for the people to stay overnight, set up temporary shelters and mess tents. And the next day, they set to work to rebuild the town. On off-duty hours throughout the next few weeks, they worked as carpenters, painters, bricklayers, plumbers, and electricians. And from their example, the people of Kotzebue took heart. As the town was rebuilt, so their hope for the future was rekindled. Such acts by you and your friends today are shaping our world of tomorrow. We pause now for station identification. The curtain rises on Act Three of our very own, starring Terry Moore as Gale, Joan Evans as Joan and Robert Wagner as Chuck. It's three hours later. Gail McCauley has come home. The house is dark, but someone's waiting for her on the porch. Gail? Oh, I, I didn't see you. Do you realize it's two o'clock? I was with Zaza. I thought you'd understand. That's what I failed to understand. Oh, Chuck told us. But why would you rather be with Zaza than with us? I'm sorry you don't like my friends. Well, what about us? Didn't it enter your head that we'd be waiting, sick with worry about you? What about your mother? I left my mother in Long Beach. She's fine. Gail. <laughs> Gail, I'm sorry. Wait. Wait. <laughs> Lois, where is she? Where's Gail? I just went to her room. She's gone. She went to school. School? You sure? But so early. They have to rehearse the graduation ceremony. Oh, for a minute there, I thought she... Yes. I, I suppose you did, dear. Fred, Mrs. Lynch phoned while you were shaving. Mrs. Lynch? She couldn't call last night. She told me what happened. Well? The Lynches were entertaining last night when Gail got there. His poker club host. Fred, that poor child. That's why she didn't come directly home. And I had to slap her on top of all that. Oh, I'm sure she doesn't blame you, dear. But in all of her life, I never before... Exactly. It's been 18 years of this. Of love and care against a few anguished moments. But only Gail can weigh them against each other. Just do me one favor, Lois. Call me when she gets home from school, just so I know she's all right. I will, dear. And try to come home early. Graduation ceremony start at 7.30. Can I come in, Gail? Well, what is it, Penny? Three more telegrams, Gail. I guess now you'll have to graduate tonight. Thanks. You still working on your speech? Well, I'm trying to. 
The privileges of citizenship. Sounds awful dull to me. I'm afraid I have to agree. I'm sure glad I don't have to make a speech tonight. I'd die. Gail? Gail, are you still upstairs? What do you want, Joni? She's busy. Zaza's off the phone. She wants to talk to Gail. I'll be right there. Thanks. What does Zaza want, dear? I bet she's all excited about tonight, too, huh? She'd like to come over early. I mean here, Mother. By all means, if she'd like to. She wants to show me her new dress, and then we'll drive over to school together. Do you mind? No, dear, of course not. Thank you. I, I'd i better get back to my speech. She she won't even drive over with us? It's all right, Joan, if that's what she wants. Oh, Mother, I'd do anything. Just anything if I could we only... all would, darling. Now, come on. If I'm ever going to get your hair done... said I'd find you up here. Well, hope you don't mind my coming over like this. No, but it's about time you showed up. Well, open the box, Zaza. Let me see your dress. Oh, Gail, is this yours? Mm-hmm. Oh, this is perfectly beautiful. Well, where did you get it for Pete's sake? My mother... It was made at home. Now let me see yours. I got it at Pritchard's. I'd hate to tell you what it cost. Anyway, it's kind of cute, I think. Well, like it? Oh, it's... Stunning, Zaza. Did your father help you pick it out? Are you kidding? My pop wouldn't be caught dead in a dress shop. At least not with me. Well, anyway, he'll get a big kick out of seeing you in it. Not unless they put it on television. He's up at Santa Barbara. You mean he won't be there tonight? Well, it was a question of missing this or missing some party up there. Well, well we, we better, better get, get dressed. <laughs> hey, we said that together. Now we've got to make a wish. Well... What did you wish? My wish was to get married as quickly as possible and have scabs of kids. My mother died when I was born, and being an only child isn't what it's cracked up to be. You mind if I use your hairbrush? Go ahead. Thanks. I guess families can be an awful pain in the neck sometimes, but there's a lot to be said for them. What did you wish? I didn't. Come on, we've got to hurry. <laughs> Does Gail get to make her speech? Yes, dear, I, I think so. I hope so. I've been sitting here for two hours. She's getting up now, Miss McCauley. Gosh, she looks so pretty. Everybody be quiet. This I want to hear. And now, with a nod of thanks to our school orchestra, I call upon Miss Gail McCauley, vice president of the graduating class. Miss McCauley. Oh, oh, now, now, no need to overdo it, you know. Most of us here were born in America, and unthinkingly, we take the wonderful privilege of our citizenship for granted. Others, quite a few, acquired that privilege by adopting this land as their own. And to them, I know, that privilege is all the more hallowed and precious. It should be. There are other things which too many of us take for granted. The everyday, priceless privileges of being raised in a house. Which, by the magic of being lived but in by a family... that's not the speech she was working on. Penny, just a house but it isn't. She home. must have done it over. A home filled with memories to treasure. A home where sisters fought and made up. Where a mother was wise and gentle and understanding. Where a father was just. Always indulgent, though stern sometimes when we deserved it. All this we are too apt to take for granted... And we never should, for next to the great privilege of being a citizen is the simpler and, in a sense, even greater privilege of just belonging to and being one of a family. I just assumed she'd meet us out here. Oh, there she is. She's coming. Look. Hey, we're over here. Gail! Gail! Oh, Mother, Mother, 
Daddy. Oh, darling, you were wonderful. One good thing, it sure was a short thing. Thanks, honey, thanks. Oh, I don't know what to say, Gail. I, I don't, honestly. Sometimes sisters don't have to say anything, Joan. Sometimes they just know. Hey, can I see your diploma? Oh, sure. Here, take it. Gail, it was beautiful. Hey, Joni, come on. Joni, I'm waiting. I'll see you later, Bert. I'm busy. Oh, go on, Joni. Have fun. Gail, hey, Gail. Looks like you're being paged, too. Now run along. <laughs> Chuck, Chuck, can you wait a minute? Oh, don't be silly, dear. We'll see you later. And I'll get her home early, Miss McCauley. I'm a sturdy, reliable character. <laughs> Goodbye, Mother. Goodbye, Daddy. Hey, what about me? Goodbye, Penny, darling. Hang on to that diploma. Well, Pop, I guess that's that. Yes, I guess it is. And I'll thank you, young woman, to stop growing up. In a moment, our stars will return. You'll probably remember when the waves of the North Sea burst through Holland's dikes and turned the little country into a land of terror. It was Western Europe's worst flood disaster. More than 1,400 people were killed, and over 60,000 were made homeless. The property loss was greater than that suffered during World War II. But America answered the call from the Dutch people. Within just a few hours, United States Army helicopters were evacuating hundreds from the danger areas. Mercy planes filled with blankets, coats, shoes, and food brought quick relief in the emergency. Among the many who contributed was the 82nd Airborne Division. They remembered the courage and the help displayed by the Dutch people when they parachuted into Holland in 1944. This one unit collected nearly 20,000 pounds of clothing and over $12,000 in cash for relief in the flooded country. Now, there was no official drive behind this operation. It emerged right from the heart, a spontaneous, genuine reaction to a country struck by disaster. It proved once more that in the hour of need, people will reach across borders and oceans to help their fellow men. Such acts by you and your friends today are shaping our world of tomorrow. Now, Mr. Cummings with our stars. And here they are to receive our applause for three fine performances. Joan Evans, Robert Wagner, and Terry Moore. I hope you young people won't mind if I take a moment to reminisce. Because 20 years ago tonight, the radio theater gave its first performance. I recall it was 7th Heaven with John Bowles and Miriam Hopkins. <laughs> of course, you were all in kindergarten then. Joe may have been in kindergarten, but I was working. After all, I was in the movies when I was four years old. You needn't be so smug just because I wasn't discovered until I was 14. <laughs> and now you're an old married woman. How time flies. Mr. Cummings, you'd better tell us about next week's show. Next week, we'll tell you a story of today's pioneers of scientific aviation. It's a tense, absorbing drama of test pilots and their thrilling adventure, breaking the sound barrier. And as our stars of this exciting United Artists release, one of our finest actresses, Dorothy McGuire. And as our co-star... That excellent British actor, Robert Newton. That will be a great show. Good night. Good night. Good night. The Hollywood Radio Theater is produced by Mr. Irving Cummings. Our orchestra is under the direction of Rudy Schrager. This is Ken Carpenter inviting you to join us next week at this same time for another presentation of the Hollywood Radio Theater. Hollywood Radio Theater is a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.